Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have John Milionis, who is the channel director for ANZ for Forcepoint. So welcome to the jam, John. Thanks so much for having me, Nick. Pleasure to uh, join you. No worries. Um, so today we're going to be talking a lot about cybersecurity and data protection. So to begin, could you tell us, are cybersecurity and data protection the same thing? Uh, well, they're not. Um, they are intrinsically linked. But if we think about cybersecurity, um, it's about trying to keep, uh, you know, the bad guys out of the network. So, um, in the, in, you know, in the main, about um, mitigating external threats, trying to keep things out, ransomware, malware, um, you know, phishing and all those sorts of things. Um, so most organisations have got cybersecurity solutions, um, but they often don't have data protection policies in place. So if we kind of think about it, you know, we're sitting, I'm sitting here in my home. So, you know, I've got window locks and roller doors and, you know, uh, all those sorts of things. But if the bad guys get in, you know, they want my valuables. Similarly, you know, in a, uh, an IT context, you know, we've got firewalls and endpoint agents and, you know, secure network connections and the like. But, you know, unfortunately, the bad guys are still getting in and when they get in, they want access to the data. So typically cybersecurity is about trying to keep stuff out um, from, you know, getting into your business. Data protection is about actually protecting the crown jewels when the bad guys do get in. Right. Yeah. So it sounds like data protection is kind of um, more, not more valuable, but kind of just different and uh, it kind of, yeah, protects you in different ways. So could you explain what exactly, like how is data protection different? Yeah, sure. So if we just think about our day-to-day -day activities, Nick, um, you know, we're creating a huge amount of data. We share a huge amount of data, both internally to our company networks and externally. And, you know, if you just think about some of the simple things that, you know, people might do in an organisation, you know, are they able to access, you know, Salesforce? Can they go and access, uh, you know, confidential price lists or research and development or technical diagrams, you know, all sorts of things, contracts and so on and so forth. So if we think about a lot of these things and then what, you know, what are the users able to do with that data? You know, can they save it, you know, locally? Can they save it to USB? Can they upload things from their work machine to, uh, you know, Gmail or Box? Uh, you know, can they take screenshots of confidential, uh, you know, Teams calls or Zoom calls and all these sorts of things. So, you know, the way we access data as users and, um, if we think about that, sort of that's activity within the network. And, you know, this data could be stored, you know, it could be a legacy application stored, you know, on-prem, it could be an application sitting in cloud, you know, you could be um, storing things locally. So it really is about, you know, your interaction with data and protecting that. And, and if we think about it, um, you know, you may be, um, uh, you know, a compromised user. And if someone's got your credentials and they're able to access data and then exfiltrate it in lots of different ways, it puts the organisation at risk. Similarly, I might be a malicious insider and unfortunately there are many people that, uh, you know, breach confidentiality of organisations. And if they've given unfettered access without the protections around the data they can access and what they can do with that data and they're able to exfiltrate that data, that can also place a business at significant risk. So, you know, data protection really is about that interaction between users and data. Right, yeah, brilliant. Um, so with cybersecurity solutions like firewalls, endpoint agents, that sort of thing, are these things not securing data the way they're supposed to? Well, if we think about, you know, the IT, um, you know, uh, ecosystem, um, you know, there's record investment. So, you know, we wake up every day and see a Gartner report suggesting that the market is just growing by huge amounts and it's worth hundreds of billions of dollars. So despite the record investment of organisations in things like, you know, firewalls and endpoint agents and cloud and, you know, secure uh, SD-WAN and, and all these sorts of things, data breaches are occurring at an unabated rate. So, you know, some of the statistics are frightening. So, for example, in Australia, we had 1,057 major data breaches alone last year that were notifiable data breaches, and it's exceeding that pace this year. You know, already this year, we've had, you know, Channel 9, um, you know, New South Wales Transport, New South Wales Ed, you know, JB Meets was breached the other week. So, despite the record investment in cybersecurity solutions trying to keep stuff out, the bad guys are still getting in. And, you know, there's a ransomware um, uh, attack every nine seconds globally, which is some research that we commissioned and found. So it's staggering. So they're, they're not the same thing. You know, when the bad guys get in, um, one of the statistics I did read last week from a FireEye report is they're in the network on average for 76 days. So if we think about the amount of time the bad guys have got to dwell, so imagine like someone's in my home for 76 days. 
Like, what could they do? You know, they'd be going through my passports. They'd be going through my laptops. They'd be going through my drawers. They'd be, they'd, they'd have unfettered access to my entire life. They'd be going through my tax returns, everything that's sitting here in my home. So similarly in a business, if we imagine that the bad guys are in it for 76 days, the cybersecurity solutions are not protecting the data. So if the bad guys have got in, so all the external um, solutions that we've put out to try and keep the bad guys from getting in, once they are in and they are getting in at increasing rates, then data protection really is about securing the data, you know, providing uh, checks and balances around, hey, who can access what? What can they do with that information? Uh, you know, do they need two-factor authentication? Are we going to encrypt this? Are we going to block this action? Are we going to stop you, Nick, from saying, hey, look, you know, you're working from home at the moment. Um, you know, you can only print this document on a company printer. Um, no, you can't save this to a USB. You can't screenshot this and save it locally and, you know, create a zip file and, and zap it up here. So they're, they're two very different things. So I think the answer really, Nick, is that, you know, once the bad guys are in your network, what we have found is a huge gap in the data protection capabilities of organisations. And a lot of those organisations are now realising this. And typically, if they have been breached, they'll look backwards and say, well, you know, how did the bad guys get in? When did they get in? Are they still in? What have they taken? But unfortunately, at that point, it's too late. Right, yeah. Um, so we've obviously talked a lot about data protection, obviously. So mm -hmm. with all that in mind, how can organizations improve their data protection capabilities? Yeah, so if you think about data protection, it really, um, you know, it's symbiotic and it augments um, your cybersecurity solutions. So, you know, they, they both are needed, okay? And, you know, where, um, you know, Forcepoint comes in is we really sit at that access moment of user and data. So if we think about the bad guy being in for 76 days, and, and the bad guy might also be someone internal that's trying to do something. So, well, you know, I want to go and set up my own new consultancy or, or you know, hey, I want to go to a competitor and I want to take the customer list or the price list. So, you know, it's also bad guys, but, in, you know, uh, internally uh, there are bad guys too. So Forcepoint sits at the interaction of data and the user, right? And then what we do is we drive outcomes in real time. So if we think about, you know, protecting our most valuable data sets. You know, it could be banks with all the financial information of people. It could be government agencies that know a lot about us. It could be a healthcare provider that, you know, has our health records. We sit at that intersection and we drive policy outcomes in real time. So what we call left of breach, because, you know, post breach and we look in the rearview mirror and go, oh my God, are they still in? And, you know, we, we know that story. So how do we get ahead of that curve? So by sitting at that intersection moment, you know, and there's billions of these moments a day. If we think about how many times we access data and we create data and we, you know, transfer data through the network or through the cloud or what have you, if we can drive policy outcomes in real time. So if data is being exfiltrated, if the bad guys are in your network and, you know, they've compromised your credentials, Nick, and they're trying to shift terabits of data and our system picks up and says, whoa, 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 hey, you know, this is not allowed. Or, you know, if I want to go and do something that's beyond my scope at work, and it says, hey, John, you know, we're going to encrypt this. So, you know, you can't, um, you know, you can't access this outside of the company network or we're going to flat out block this. And so by integrating data protection into your overall cyber requirements and then tying that into your SOC, for instance, um, you know, you start getting really powerful benefits. And, you know, what we do know is that data is the crown jewel of every organisation. So, you know, that gap for, for companies on how they can secure their data is a real challenge and it really, you know, sits as an overlay across their um, their entire IT stack, Nick. Brilliant, yeah, cool. Well, that was my final question. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, that brings us to an end to today's IT Jam. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks so much. I really appreciate the time.